Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about the Excel 2016 exam and we're looking at the domain for the exam called Create and Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. Overall, this accounts for 30 to 35% of the overall exam and it has five different sections in this domain. When I counted it up, there's over 30 different things you could be tested on within this domain. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and break this up into three different videos. This is the second video, and in this video, we're looking at format worksheets and workbooks. So let's go ahead and jump into Excel. We are looking at the Excel 2016 exam, and we're looking at the Create and Manage Worksheets and Workbooks domain, which takes up about 30 to 35% of the overall exam. Specifically within that domain, we're looking at the subdomain called Format Worksheets and Workbooks. The very first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to change the worksheet tab color. And that's simple enough to do. If I right click here on the worksheet tab, I get the option to change the tab color. You have theme colors, you have standard colors, and then you have the option of adding even more colors here. But for this, we're just going to go ahead and apply the standard red color. And notice it went ahead and applied that red color to the worksheet tab. The next thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to rename the worksheet. I normally just double click on the tab, but you can also right click and select rename. We're going to call this planets. We're going to hit enter on our keyboard to set the text. The subdomain tells us that we need to be able to change the worksheet order, and that's simple enough to do. If I just click, and then with my mouse, I can drag this worksheet around. And if you look very carefully, right on top of the worksheet tabs, you see a little triangle that tells you where the worksheet's gonna be placed. So if I let go there, it puts it there. You can also drop it here. It's easy enough to do. We just need to click and drag. Next, it tells us that we need to be able to modify our page setup. To do that, what we wanna do is go to the page layout tab here at the top. We're in the page setup group and really what we want to focus for this is on the margins. We can click that to use a couple of preset margins or we could do a custom margin here. And then we have the option of changing the top, bottom, left and right, as well as our header and our footer here. Go ahead and click cancel. We also have the option of doing the orientation here so we can change it from portrait to landscape or vice versa. And then we also have the page size. So maybe you wanted legal here. We could do that. And now we have the legal dimensions. And this dotted line that appeared here, it's just telling us where the page would get cut off when we go to send this file to the printer. This domain tells us that we need to be able to insert and delete columns and rows. What I normally do is just go to the place where I want to insert a column or a row. And then I just right click and click insert. And notice a column was placed to the left of the column I had selected. And then Let's say I wanted to add a row above Earth. To do that, I would here just right click on the six, the row number, and click insert. And notice it put one above. You should note that whenever you insert a column, it goes to the left, the new column, and a row always goes above. To delete, it's the same process. We'll right click D here, but instead of hitting insert, we'll select delete. And I went ahead and removed that. Same thing here. If we right click there and just select delete, that now disappears. This domain tells us that we also need to be able to adjust the row height and column width. That's easy enough to do. If I just click in between A and B and notice that my cursor is changed to align with two arrows, I then have the ability to click and drag left or click and drag right. And notice it quickly stretches out. I can do the same here with the rows. Another easy way to auto fit the content is right here. I don't have enough room for this row header. If I just double click in between G and H, notice it went ahead and it fit that content for me. I can also right click between a column or a row and select column width for this, or if it was a row, it'd say row height. And then I have the ability to go ahead and just key in the data. So on the certification exam, if it tells you to do a specific width or a specific height, you can just key that in, no problem. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to change the themes. We're on the page layout tab. This is the themes group right here on the top left. And if we click the themes drop down, you have a lot to choose from here. 
and it does things like change the font and the colors that are used within the document. You also have the ability to change the colors. You should be familiar with this theme section, specifically probably the themes and the colors. You might be asked to change the fonts or some of the effects, but most likely it'll be the themes or the colors. And the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert headers and footers. There are a few ways to access this section, but what I normally do is go to the insert tab here at the top and then go to the text group header and footer. And it changes the view of my worksheet. And within the header and the footer, I have three sections. I have a left, mid and right. And if I click in here, I get the header and footer tools design tab. A lot of what you'll be looking for is in this section here. It might say add the page number to the left header and that's easy enough to do. And then on the right, apply the current time. If you need to drop to the footer, sometimes it can be kind of difficult to scroll down within the worksheet and get down there. But what you'll be able to do is click go to footer and it will drop down to that section for you. I also want you to note that over here in the header and footer section, this section is often neglected and it's important because there are some predefined headers and footers that you very well could be asked to put in your worksheet on the exam. And then you also have the different first page different odd and even pages. So just be aware of this section here. To close out of the header and footer, you can just click within the worksheet. And then I don't like this view, and so I often want to get out of it. You can click here in the status bar, or you can go to the view tab here at the top and go back to normal. And then my view changes back to what it was before. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.